Our next mom is Stephanie Turner. She is a mom of four, and she is from the border state of Texas. Thank you for, thank you for inviting me. Um, my story tonight is talking about my son, Tucker, and I have four kids. Tucker is my firstborn, my only son, and I have three daughters. And just like all moms, we're trying to figure out how to raise our kids, how to keep them safe and protect them and grow them into successful adults. Um, in 2021, my son was exposed to a fentanyl-laced Xanax, and that is, um, was disguised as a pharmaceutical medication. And over the next 10 weeks, he was taking what he thought to be Xanax. At that point in 2021, I had never heard the word illicit fentanyl, and I did not understand. And the first time he was offered a pill, he came home and told me about it. Um, Tucker was the definition of a mama's boy. He talked to me about a lot of things, and um, we had a very close relationship. He had a great circle of friends and family and support. And I'm here tonight to say that that is not enough because taking those Xanax created an addiction and that led to a very short time of recovery for Tucker. And unfortunately, Tucker took another pill and that took his life. Um, that was September of 2021. And Prior to that, I did not know that 80% of people who struggle with fentanyl dependency relapse within one year of treatment. Little did I know it would be the number one cause of death, that it was sold and marketed by teenagers on social media. He could order a pill online easier than he could order a pizza. That seven out of 10 pills have a lethal amount of fentanyl. This is a war absolutely a war and my son was a casualty of this war and it's from this and why I talk about Tucker's story because it would be really easy to say one pill one time and that's what happened but that's not what's happening kids are being exposed it's creating a dependency and our babies are dying people know the effects of it and they use it anyways because that's how strong it is that's the impact that it has on the body it is unlike anything else. You cannot see it, you can't taste it, you can't smell it, you don't know what it's in. So just to think that our kids could be consuming anything, our brains are not even fully developed until they're 25 years old. And my son made a decision as a 19-year-old boy that I know he would not make had he known. So as you can imagine, I started researching and learning more about it and I learned that over 200 people a day die in America, that an entire classroom of adolescents ages 14 to 18 die every single week in America. These are our youngest, 14 to 18 most vulnerable population, and they're dying every single week. That really just bothers me, and if the statistic that I said of 80% of people relapse within one year of treatment, what is the trajectory of that? And then I learned that hospitals aren't testing for fentanyl, so the number that's being reported is by, it's just a drop in the bucket. So when I stand on the stage and represent hundreds of thousands of parents who are learning how to live without their children, we have lost more children, there's more parents without their children than ever before. It has killed more Americans than the Iraq, Afghanistan, and Vietnam War combined. Wow. And so with that, I was just a mad mom who wanted to talk about it, and we went ahead and we pushed for a law in Texas requiring fentanyl education in grades six through 12. It's titled Tucker's Law, and we then created the Tucker Project, which is an interdisciplinary curriculum rolled out to the states and we're working across the nation trying to get schools to teach this to understand the impact that fentanyl has and be better educated and educate our parents because we don't know what we don't know. We can't teach our kids about something that we don't know that is moving in a world faster than we have access. So that's my story. That's another tough story. Thank you. For sharing that. Um, I love how moms get stuff done. Mm. <laughs> you know, you see, we see a problem and we come in with a solution. And I am just thank you so much for turning your pain into power to help other parents. Yes, thank you.
we can either get bitter or we can get That's right. better through something and help others and save others. And again, to Tucker, what an incredible young man he was. And thank you for sharing the story. This is, again, stories that moms that are watching, I think everyone knows someone that has had a, a loss because of fentanyl now. So I know my, my, uh, my young cousin died too from fentanyl, just taking his annex like this. So it's touching every, everyone here. If we were to raise a hand, someone has heard of someone that died of fentanyl. So a huge problem that we have to address seriously. And we'll go ahead and talk with Senator about that when he gets here. Stephanie Turner has a, a question for you too. Stephanie is from Texas. Hello. Hi, Senator Vance. Um, as a mother who has lost a son to fentanyl poisoning, I deeply understand the border crisis and the human impact that it is having. Um, my question to you is, how do we cut through the red tape and move faster to reach every child across the U.S. with education-based prevention programs? We can't afford to sit idle while more lives are lost to innocent children who have no knowledge of this. Yes, ma'am. And uh, how, how old was your, your son? He was 19, he was 19 in 2021. 2021. Mm -hmm. I'm very sorry to hear it. What was his name? Tucker. Okay. I'll say, I'll say a prayer for him tonight. Thank you. And, um, you know, uh, not nearly in the way that you do, but we've, of course, experienced the problems of addiction in my own family. And you know, one of the ways that I think about this is we want people to have second chances because you know, when, 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 you, when you're caught in the throes of addiction, it's so hard to get out of it, but a lot of people do get out of it. But if they get out of it and then they relapse, and they relapse into fentanyl, sometimes there's not another second chance. And that's really what we have to change. That's why this poison is so dangerous and so deadly, is it takes away those second chances from our families, from our moms, from our dads, from our kids. It's got to stop. And it's, it's disgraceful that we frankly have a government right now that's facilitating it instead of stopping it. And you talked about cutting through the red tape and, and, and you know, what we can do on prevention and education. I think one of these things is you, know, you can only do so much with so many dollars. And so let's say you have curriculum money that's going into radical gender ideas instead of teaching kids how to say no to drugs, how to resist peer pressure, the warning signs for addiction. Because looks, I mean, you, you probably appreciate this, ma'am, having seen it, but you know, some people get addicted the minute they take an opioid. And some people could take per Percocet for three years and never get addicted. I mean, I, you know, I, I've seen this even with my own friends who had a minor surgery who take one Percocet and they're like, I'm never taking it again because I liked it way too much. It did something to me. We gotta teach kids to recognize, right, when they're going down that, that very dark pathway. You know, the second thing is, and I, I, know, I know friends from back home, family from back home, who were involved in, in detox. And if you think about recovery as being a very long road, the very first step is very often detox. And there are not enough detox facilities in the United States of America right now. We should empower our churches and our local community organizations to provide those detoxes because you can't get into recovery if you don't do the detox first. And it's very, very hard to take that first step. So why don't we make it easier to take that first step in the first place, shut down the poison coming into our country in the first place, and teach our children the red flags and the warning signs about addiction. I think if we do that, we'll, we'll start getting down the road to solving this. I mean, look, I, I, it is an unspeakable human tragedy what's going on in this country. 100,000 people, many of them in the prime of their lives. I mean, I... I, I I, I've known so many people who have lost their lives to this, and I'm sure, ma'am, you, you're asking yourself the same questions like, you know, who, who would you have fallen in love with, right? What would what, what, what kids have looked like? The human tragedy that we're allowing to happen to this country, it has got to stop. President Trump and I will fight to stop it, I promise you.